Hey YouTube, welcome to Garage Shop Science. Have you ever seen those really awesome videos where somebody's panning but they're not rotating the camera, they're just slowly panning across someone, something and the camera's going perfectly straight and everything's perfectly smooth and attached? Um, it's, it's just all one fluid motion. You ever wonder how they get those shots? Well, let me tell you. They get them with one of these. You mount your camera to it and you just slide it right across. And today, I'm going to show you how to make one for about $20, $25. So stick around. Here's what you're going to need for this build. I got two little metal, metal gang boxes. I have two packs of conduit connectors. Uh, there's six total here. I only need four, but they only sold them in a pack of three. I got six conduit connectors. I got three U bolts. I got three quarter inch conduit. It's five foot length. I have a 36 inch length of one inch L aluminum. Uh, not gonna need all of it. And I have six one inch. Uh, long 5 16 diameter bolt, nut, and lock washer. I have six of them total. The last thing is 10 608ZZ bearings. So these are basically skateboard skate bearings. The last thing is I just have a scrap piece of 2 by 6 board. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this the quarter inch conduit and we're going to cut it exactly in half. Um, you need it as close to being perfectly cut in half as you can get. So let's get to that. Hey guys, so I goofed a bit. Um, I told you I had a five foot piece of, of conduit. Well, that was correct. When I measured it, after I made the statement of it being five foot, I could have swore I measured it at six. Uh, so I cut a 36 inch piece, and then I write seven next to each other. It was, oh crap. Uh, it actually was five foot like it claimed it was. So I'm gonna end up with two 24 inch pieces. You guys should end up with uh, two 30 inch pieces. They'll still work. Uh, next off is cut the aluminum brackets. Okay, so we got our angle brackets cut. Got five inches of angle bracket. Take the old set to the side. I'm gonna take my mixture 12 inch piece of conduit. Set it off to the side. Next thing to do is to prep our gang boxes. Okay, once we got those done, we're gonna take our con conduit adapters. Okay, so I have a fully solid piece here. Uh, I am going to have to clean off the sticker. I'm just going to clean it off with a little acetone or something. The next part is we're going to drill holes in each of these. So we're going to stick all of our bolts through, and then we're going to stick a nut on. This nut's going to act as a spacer. Okay, so now we should have two angle brackets, one of them with four bolts, one of them with two bolts sticking out with a nut that's acting as a spacer. We're going to go and stick a bearing on each one. My, my thought was, you have these going through, each of these, and each of these is going to have a bearing on it, and my mindset was, the one with one goes in the middle, you line up the three bearings together, and the one with two goes with the one with two. Well, instead, what I'm going to do is the one with two 
is going to go with the one. So you're going to have one bearing putting a force down here, while these four are putting the force back, and the, one, the two are going to go right here. And so you're going to have two bearings putting a force that way, and two bearings putting a force that. It should even the forces out until everything's balanced really well. Um, let's put it together and give it a shot and see. Okay, let's see if this thing actually rolls smoothly. I think I've got everything pretty. There it all goes. <laughs> oh, so I had it. I had it. It was going smoothly. Um, you guys get the concept, though. So let me fiddle around with this because it's. Th this is how it's supposed to work. Um, you just have to have everything perfectly lined up. So let me fiddle around with it, and then I'll be back. Okay? I'm not gonna make you guys wait while I'm fiddling around with it. Okay, YouTube. So I did some design tweaks to the uh, slider, the camera slider, and I think I've gotten all the issues that I was having before figured out. Um, I, I had assembled it earlier and it was working fine. So let me go through the tweaks that I made first because the Rev 1 that I did earlier that I was showing you guys how to make didn't quite work out. Um, first thing, I had this piece here that had a bearing on each side with the this guy's out. What's in now is a six inch long piece with the bolts half an inch in. So just like the five inch long, now I have a six inch long one also. So we have two of these. I've gone ahead and painted all my stuff because like I said, I assembled it. It all worked well. Um, I still have a few more tweaks to do, but I went and painted my rail system this bright blue. I basically just found what paint I had lying around uh, and had enough of. And I painted my slider system white, so it'll have a nice little contrast. It might might be a bit too flashy, but oh well. Uh, so what I did, I had to go get two more of the one inch five sixteenths bolts. I had to get four more nuts. Uh, I had to get three more bearings. Fortunately for me, I had three bearings just lying around. I use these on my 3D printer and CNC projects all the time, so I have tons of these. 608 cc bearings. Um, so in total, you're going to need 12 of these 608 cc bearings now. I also went and got another U-bolt and I took a much, much better approach and much more patience and drilled a new block and drilled it much better. The gaps on these are 4 inches for these and six inches for these. And I took a, a square on the edge and drew straight lines across. And I went ahead and took measurements on this and took measurements on these so I got everything perfectly square. So whenever I went to start drilling holes in this, I had lines going all over the place uh, that were all perfectly square. And the conclusion I came to was, let me remind myself here. Um, so two and an eighth is the center to center of these. So one and a sixteenth on each side of this. So if you were to draw a center line for each of these, you're gonna do one and a sixteenth on this side, and one and a sixteenth on this side for this one, and do the same on that. So how I did this was I first drew a line right in the center of this board. My board's seven and a half inches, so I went to three and three eighths, drew a center line. Um, and then from there, I found the distance of these two, which I do not know off the top of my head what it actually was, so let's take a second look here. It looks to me like it was about two and three eighths. Um, so I, I did, then did a, what would that be, one and three sixteenths? One and three sixteenths this way and one three sixteenths that way on it and drew a line. So then I had three lines on my board, which gave me the perfect center line for this. Um, from there, I was able to do the one and one sixteenth on each side of those to get my lines for these. And, from, and then I just did my cross lines that intersected those for all my drill points. What that ended up giving me was a perfectly square board with holes uh, spaced perfectly for this. That would also make sure that the 
very edge of the arc here is right in the center of this. So whenever I have my bearing attached here, it's gonna be right just perfect on this. With that said, let me assembling this now. So my camera hit its 15 minute record limit. It only record for, uh, I record this in 4K and export in 1080. It only record 4K for 15 minutes. Uh, so it hit its limit, stopped recording. While it was stopped, I went ahead and tightened these up. Uh, currently they are, as you can see, they're not really, really tight. They're just kind of loosely tight. Uh, but this slides very, very well. I'm going to go ahead and get my hot glue gun heat, heat warming up. Should have done that a minute ago, but everything is lined up very, very well. So once the hot glue gun warms up, what I'm going to do is extremely carefully, I'm going to put a bead of glue on the inside race, so the inner, the ID portion of each of these bearings on both sides. I'm going to put a little bitty hot glue so that these bearings, the inner races stay attached to these U-bolts. They're already lined up, so I'm going to make sure and just attach the two together. Other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of hot glue along the edge, inner and outer. Not, I don't need a ton, just enough to hold in place of these two aluminum cha uh, channels to make sure that channel stays in line on its wood. Final step of this build process. I still have my hot glue gun all hot. Um, you can either buy eight more of these 5 16 uh, nuts and screw them all down and do a jam nut. Uh, I'm actually thinking about doing that, but just to keep it cheap, I know nuts are dirt cheap, so you're only looking at like two bucks there. I'm gonna go ahead and just hot glue them down though, because uh, I don't want them backing out at all. So I'm gonna hot glue all the way around every single one of these, and then I'm gonna take my journal and I'm gonna cut these off. Cut them off and file them. And then I'll be done. Paint the sky your favorite color. Your favorite color. Look at my great paint job. Oh, okay, it's still there. Good. Okay, now that's been assessed. Uh, second thing, <laughs> cutting these heated up the super glue, or the, the, hot, the hot glue, and has made some of these decently loose, like much looser than they were originally. So, my hot glue is basically pointless. My advice to you guys, find where you need to cut them, cut them, then glue all your nuts in place or jam nut them or what have you. Um, honestly, just just jam nut them from the get go. Just go ahead and jam nut them and have that be that. Okay, YouTube, I'm back and it's complete. And holy cow, is it smooth! It is nice. Um, Unfortunately, the bearings are a bit noisy, so if you're doing video with sound, you're going to need to have a separate mic on the person you're filming, or uh, some, some, type of, some type of separate mic. You don't want to use the in-camera mic. Um, I do find myself using a mix of in-camera mic and uh, lapel mic, but with this, you're going to have to use 
the good news is most of the times you're going to be using this, you're going to be using it for a time lapse shot or just a panning shot of an object and it's not really going to be vocals, it's going to be of a product of some type or something like that. So usually you don't have audio in those shots. Um, so what I did, I couldn't get the get some more nuts on top of it, on top of the threaded rod to hold everything down to, to act as jam nuts. Um, so I just put extra hot glue all the way around every single nut. I readjusted everything so that it was exactly how I wanted. It was perfectly smooth. And I put hot glue all the way around all the nuts and around the thread. So these nuts should not move. I mean, they're not under a lot of stress really, so that there's no reason for them to never move. They should never move. In addition to that, I filed the tops as best I could, but they were still sharp and had sharp enough and had some sharp edges that I didn't want to risk myself or anyone I would ever loan this to. I just don't want to risk anybody cutting up their hands. I mean, if you have a camera mounted to this and you're panning and you're using it, you're focusing on your camera and on your shot. You don't need to be worrying about what your hands might hit and get cut on. So what I did was I covered the tip of all of these with uh, more hot glue and you're not getting cut from this. It's, it's perfectly safe. Um, so here it is. And it is, it is butter smooth. So total cost, about a dollar per uh, junction box. I think it was two fifty per pack of three of. No, it's a dollar fifty per pack of three of these connectors, and you, you need four of them, so you need two packs. So that's three dollars. Um, U-bolts were about a dollar fifty each. Uh, bearings were. I had some extras lying around. You can usually find them for about uh, five bucks for five to seven dollars for twelve. Uh, search eBay. Be patient on them. Uh, the tube, I only used one. You can use two, and you can have one that's you know five feet long, which would be awesome. Uh, a little bit bigger than I would want to deal with. I made the stupid mistake of cutting mine a little shorter. I wish I hadn't, because then mine would actually be 30 inches instead of 24. But the one tube was 250. Uh, all the nuts, bolts, that they're really about five dollars. So at, at the end of the day, you're gonna be around the 20, 25 dollar price range. Um, I've never looked up the price of one of these for a camera, um, so I've never looked up a professional one, but I would, I would like to assume that they're in the two to $300 price range at the cheapest. Uh, this one, I said about 25 bucks. It works great. Uh, you can mount a camera head to, uh, a tripod head to it and mount your camera to that if you want. Um, or you can do something as simple as just stick a quarter 20 bolt up through it straight into your camera. Have your camera mount directly to this. I'm probably gonna buy a tripod head and mount it directly to it. That way I can have a panning head so I can pan while I'm moving. Um, there it is. So if you guys like this video, hit the subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, let me know if you have any other comments or suggestions. Uh, and thanks. Look forward to the next project.